Welcome again. Today on Kevin 3, we look at the Maxwell Boltzmann curve and how to sketch and label it, how to use it to demonstrate the effect of temperature on reaction rate, and how to use it to demonstrate the effect of catalysts on reaction rate. Let's move in and take a closer look. And here you can see exactly how to go about sketching the Boltzmann distribution curve with an X and Y axis and on the X axis kinetic energy and on the Y axis the number of particles. An alternative title for this Y axis could be the probability and an alternative title for this X axis could be velocity. But for a given number of particles at temperature T1, the Maxwell Boltzmann curve shows this kind of asymptotic spread. Or to put it simply, the curve is skewed towards the y axis with this peak here. And the area under the curve corresponds to all of the particles in the container. If the particles in the container are heated up at a higher temperature, then the number of particles remain the same. But at temperature T2, the distribution of energy among these particles changes. And here you can see now that the average kinetic energy of particles in T2 is this much, which is significantly higher than the average kinetic energy at temperature T1. It's important to note that this high peak does not mean a higher energy. It simply means that at temperature T1, most of the particles have this level of kinetic energy, which fits in with the fact that this is the average level of energy, although some particles can have this amount of energy. At a higher temperature, this number of particles here have a significantly greater amount of energy. Generally, particles have more energy when the temperature is higher. And this is the reason for the shift in the curve towards the right. But the shape generally remains asymptotic or skewed towards the left side. What you can see from this difference in energy distribution from T1 to T2 is that at T1, if particles need a certain critical amount of energy to go from reactants to products, this critical amount of energy being termed the activation energy, then you can see that at T1, this many particles would cross the activation energy and go from reactants to products. But at T2, a larger number of particles are able to cross the barrier, which fits in with the reasoning that as you increase the temperature from T1 to T2, the rate of the reaction increases, which means that in a given period of time, more particles would cross the activation energy barrier. Now, what if we were to lower this activation energy by putting in a catalyst into the system, something that would make it more likely for collisions to be favorable ones, and every time one particle bounces into another one, reactants are more likely to become products. If you introduce a catalyst into the system, then the energy of activation falls, and you can place this line here. What this shows is that at both temperatures now, more particles here at T1 would be able to cross the energy barrier and also at T. So the Maxwell-Boltzmann energy distribution diagram is very useful for explaining the effect of changing temperature on reaction rate and for demonstrating that at a higher temperature, more particles have the amount of energy required to cross the activation energy barrier and go from reactants to products. And if the curve is properly annotated or labeled, then you can show how the activation energy affects the number of particles that can cross the barrier in the presence of a catalyst.